Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having a great Sunday. I really want to thank you guys, first of all, for taking time out of your busy Sunday and out of your entire week just to tune into this live stream. Uh, for those that are tuning in for the first time, uh, my name is Ricky. We go live uh, or host these specific live streams. They're called our Sunday Stock Talks. They're one of our largest live stream events. We usually get um, close to about two to 3,000, uh, usually around 2,000 people uh, that tune in live. But uh, we come together as a group. We talk about the top stocks that we see value in uh, for this specific week. And the most important part on why it's so effective, I think, because it you know lets us regroup, kind of plan out where we should be paying attention to, uh, and just make sure that you know through all the mayhem that we might have experienced through the weekend, uh, that we, you know, uh, kind of just come together and, and um, get put pack back in place. Um, so I'm really, <laughs> I'm already seeing some of the comments too. And you guys should be able to see uh, the comments. I'm going to, let me see. There we go. What's up? What's up? I want to say what's up to you guys. And I want to ask you guys, that, let's see, what is it that I always ask, like, where are you guys from? Um, and you guys usually put uh, like the city or the state and stuff like that. So let's actually talk about this. So we, um, especially within Learn, Plan, Profit, and TechBud Solutions, we have a set goal of, of what we set with percentage growth. I, I don't care to hear about your dollar value growth uh, like goal on a weekly basis, but I think for you know to have some structure and to you know be able to work towards you know your overall goal. Like, what is your goal this week? Is it anywhere from one percent, two percent, three percent? You know, being transparent and the way that I uh, specifically approach it, even with how long I've been trading, I try to aim for about ten to fifteen percent growth a week. So I want to hear and see how many um, and what it is that you guys are aiming for on uh, based on percentage goes at three percent a week, five percent a week. I like it. I want you guys to know that seven to ten percent, even fifteen percent, in my experience, um, is pretty aggressive. Especially if you're trading with a little bit of a larger account. If you're someone that's just getting started, uh, then it makes sense on why you know just starting with about one to three percent can be something that can really just assist you in getting the ball rolling. So I'm really happy to see that so many people are so focused in just getting the ball rolling. I see a lot of two percent, three percent, five percent, seven percent. 7%, uh, 5 to 7%, I, I would say, especially if you're just getting started, that's definitely very aggressive. I mean, you might get lucky from time to time, but the most important thing, what is the most important thing that we talk about? The number one most important thing that we talk about when it comes down to trading and taking a position, what is our biggest goal? If you're part of Learn, Plan, Profit, what is our biggest goal? Consistency and understanding. So you see everyone posting it, right? Consistency and understanding the risk that you are taking, that the overall investment that you are taking. I think that's one of the biggest drawbacks that a lot of newer traders lack. It's they take positions based on other people's opinion or because someone told them that it's a good deal, yet they cannot make sense of it. So we have three rules within our group. You don't have to follow them. But one of those three rules um, is you know never invest based on other people's opinion. We want to make sure that you only take positions and um, you know opportunities in which that you understand. The second thing is always make sure that you could manage your risk. I think one of the most important parts when it comes down to investing in the stock market is the only way that you're going to be able to continuously grow your account is if you could actually manage right how much money that you give back. Losses are inevitable, right? They're going to happen in the stock market. But one of the best and most important things is to become a professional and in a, a uh, to try. I mean. It's, it's going to take time, but to try to refine your eye on how to manage risk. I think that's also something that's very important. And then the last thing is, like we've said, you know, never trade based on other people's opinion. Always have a plan before investing. And then um, I don't know why I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for this live stream. I don't know. I normally don't get nervous for our Sunday stock talks, uh, but I'm pretty nervous for this one. I just had a little brain fart. I think it's because we have so many new people tuning in. Um, and... Let's see. Let's see how many people we have in right now. There we go. Looks like we're pretty good. So we have about a little bit over a thousand people tuning in right now live. I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah, all of you guys are cracking up right now. Uh, but yeah, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. And let's go ahead and just get right to it. So like we I've talked about multiple times before is, you know, you're not just supposed to share. So our Sunday stock talk is, um, you know, we ask our members to share the stock that they see value in this specific week that meets your specific criteria. How many of you guys can I get um, a number of hands, right? So just say me, right? Uh, for those that were able to watch the video that I uploaded yesterday uh, when it came down to the stock market criteria checklist, um, and then it would have given you access 
to this little thing right here, right? So the things that I like to look for before taking a position. How many of you guys were able to get access to this, right? So if you guys watched the video today or submitted it after you know midnight yesterday, you probably did not get it just because we send it out once, um, well, we send it out via email once uh, a night, right? But how many of you guys have access to this? There we go. All right, so we have a good amount of people. So we created this checklist, and again, it's for free. Uh, for all those that um, haven't watched this video, feel free to click on this video, and then we give you access to this for free. And it's just a series of questions and set list of criteria that a stock has to meet before you know you take a position. And I think it's just a little, a nice little friendly reminder. We made it in a very, um, you know, kind of I think appealing format. We want to make trading as fun for you as possible. Um, and I think it's very important to make sure that every single time that you take a position that you at least remind yourself, you know, what criteria a stock has to meet to be labeled as a good investment. I think we could all agree on that, right? I feel like so many times I've taken positions uh, when I'm very emotional, when I'm just trying to hit my daily goal. Um, and it's not just very effective nor efficient. Sometimes I end up giving back some of the profits that I already made. And that's one of the worst feelings because I would have 100% avoided that entry point um, if I would have just reviewed right my checklist. So uh, I hope that that can actually assist a good amount of you. Oh, and this is another thing that I wanna talk about. So TNDM squad. So there's someone that just said that. So who's part of TNDM um, or who invested in TNDM and held over the weekend? I personally did not. I had Justin, I was working on some stuff here in my YouTube room. Um, and Justin came in and he's like, please tell me you did not hold TNDM. And Justin just doesn't want me to exp like have a huge day, right? But it was over 10% that TNDM covered during extended hours. Um, so none of us, oh, so we got a couple people uh, that were still able to hold. Uh, TNDM to me uh, altogether ended up just breaking its pattern completely. So uh, it was one that was on our watch list if you're part of, you know, uh, learn plan profit. It's one that we're actively watching. I did notice something a little bit different um, on Thursday, right? So this was Friday, but on Thursday, it was one of the first days in about like one to two weeks that it traded all day in between the middle and top view up. And that was very surprising to me. It usually was trading in between the middle and bottom view up, showing signs of a downtrend. Uh, and then all of a sudden on Friday, I mean, Friday was nothing different than the other days. It was just selling off, getting rejected by this middle view up. And then all of a sudden, as the market began to close, right, during closing hours, it started to show signs of an uptrend, it consolidated, and then certain news came out that acted as a positive catalyst that drove the price up. So congrats to all those that not just held during extended hours, but I hope a lot of you guys locked in profits. I'm really excited to see what TNDM experiences during pre-market hours on Monday, so tomorrow morning, and to see how this trades. Is it going to get rejected and come back down to $36? That's definitely an option, right? Or is it gonna to continue to show signs of an uptrend? And is it something that we could expect as a potential day trade you know, and uh, for Monday, right? So we'll just have to follow up with it and see how it goes. Uh, but I did get two alerts. So before we get right into it, so these are, these are ones that I know I'm gonna be asked about, but I did get at, uh, I did get my, or my alerts went off on ticker symbol forward slash GC, uh, forward slash NG and forward slash GC. Uh, why is that important? Well, if you go on the one day, one minute mark, so this is forward slash NG and it closed down here to about 314. Um, it pushed all the way up to 322, and right now it's trading between the middle and bottom view up. So it's also honestly showing signs of a downtrend pattern, but it's all the way up to 320. So if we see how this is currently trading, so again, why is this important? Like, why, why does this matter? I actually want to see what you guys are saying. I'm having FOMO, just not being able to see your guys' conversation. All right. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about is what happens, right? So if forward slash NG is at 315 when it closed and it pushed all the way up to about 320, let's say. So it pushed up to 322, but it pushed up to highs of, um, as of right now around 320. What does that mean? So why is that important? Why does that why is that significant? What should I pay attention to? Can you guys let me know? Do you guys know uh, what I'm trying to insinuate? No. Yep. So if it holds, if and only if natural gas holds at around 320, based off previous patterns. So looking at when natural gas was at around nine o'clock on Friday, right? It hit highs of about 320. If we go on over to you guys and see at around nine o'clock and it hit highs of about $86. So based on previous patterns, if 
forward slash ng holds, we will see you guys open at around $86. That makes sense, right? Why is that important? Well, right now it's at lows of about $82. It aggressively sold off. Also, if you look at the 20 day one hour, it's been showing signs of an aggressive sell off, right? And especially on the 180 day chart, it's been really pulling back. It might be due for a nice little push up to about $86 before it continues its downtrend, right? Showing signs of it being very on the overbought side and a little bit more on the overextended side, so not so much of a good deal. So it might make for a good day trade if it can continue to rally, or you know, if it continues to show signs of a downtrend, then guess what? We simply do not have to trade it, and we could focus on its inverse ETF, which is DGAS, right? Um, the last one that I wanted to talk about for my specific stocks that I was watching um, was forward slash GC. So this is obviously a future, right? So we go to the one day, one minute chart. Why is this important? So on Friday, right? So on Friday, we saw that it closed right around 1221, right? So it built a support right out of 1221. Where was JNUG? right around about nine dollars right look at forward slash gc and look how much it's covered right since that price point so that means that if this holds if and only if it holds then we should see most likely jnug start showing signs of an uptrend but again like we've talked about multiple times before sometimes we see jnug showing signs of an uptrend and forward slash gc is selling off so i like to um you know i think that when it comes down to like the futures and how they correlate on over to ETFs. Uh, you guys and DGAS do a much better job following at a much closer, um, you know, almost like a mirror image, right? Forward slash GC, it's definitely not um, as similar to, I would say, uh, natural gas. But yeah, let's see. Okay, it looks like you guys really don't care about my breakdowns. Uh, you guys just want me to start breaking down your guys' stocks. So let's go ahead and do it. So as you guys could see, if you want me to break down the stock that you see value in, we need to make sure that you have it in the ticker call out format like you see right here. So if you don't know what the ticker call out format is, if you just simply share the ticker symbol, I'm not going to break it down. Easiest way that I can put it. So make sure that you put it in the ticker call out format and that you tag me so I see it as it's highlighted and stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And um, the first one is ASNA. So I just wanna make sure that I'm sharing my screen. That's happened before. Let's see, all right, here we go, ASNA. Here we go, so again, we have our criteria checklist. I would encourage you guys, if you guys haven't done this already, to make sure that you guys print it, as it would be much easier just to review this, but I already have mine memorized, but for those that are still you know, trying to become a little bit more familiar with it, then it obviously makes sense. So I see support at around 450, 470 is what um, we have. What is that, Lasana uh, calling out, so 450, okay. So it's definitely showing signs of an uptrend pattern. What do you guys, as I'm breaking this down, so the whole point of these videos are for me to um, share my thought process, right? So I need you guys to do the same. So as I'm breaking these down, um, if you guys can comment, right, as I comment on top of, you know, as well, um, what is it that you guys see going on here? So based on previous patterns, I see that usually when it hits right around 475, uh, it tends to become a little bit more on the overextended side. I do see that it's been making higher highs, right? So with that being said, you know, it makes sense on why it can potentially bounce on that EMA indicator. I think it's going to be very important to follow up um, on Monday and see if it starts to or begins to trade in between the middle and top view up. Again, one of the main things when it comes down to at least for a day trade for me, I want to make sure that I see signs of an uptrend pattern trading above the middle view up. That's my specific criteria. If that's not something that yours has to meet, then guess what? You don't have to follow that, right? But when I invest in something, I want to make sure that it's not just something that I see value in that's made up in my head, right? That it's actually showing signs of an uptrend. And I think that the VWAP indicator does a really good job in, you know, indicating that. So if as long as I could see that this thing is starting to make higher highs and it's progressively trading in between the middle and top VWAP, then it would make sense on why I, I might want to pay attention to this. I, I mean, out of, I just don't view this to be such you know, uh, so much of like the best deal. I do see that it has been showing signs of an uptrend pattern, but it's really just been consolidating uh, for about two months now, almost like a month and a half. Do you guys see this? It was progressively making higher highs. And then all of a sudden it kind of just started to almost peak, 
right? So if we talked about the three stages of a reversal, there's the uptrend, consolidation, and then rejection. So we might start seeing ASNA start breaking below that $4 support and start making lower lows. And that's definitely not something that, you know, I would personally find too attractive. So it looks like someone is saying something or if you're not, just not putting it in the ticker call out format, uh, again, Josh, you just want to make sure that it's in the ticker call out format so uh, you don't get um, blocked for thir uh, 30, 300 seconds. So I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to be setting my alert here. So I'm going to set my alert here for the break above um, 455 and then we could just follow up with it then. So I think that's solid. Let's get to the next one. Ticker symbol Russ. What's going on? All right, so Russ on the one day, one minute chart um, on Friday didn't do too well. Also, it has very low volume. That's something that I personally find very attractive. Okay, so one of the main things that I like to focus on uh, as part of my criteria is that I wanna make sure that it starts showing signs of an uptrend pattern and that it's trading above the 180 day EMA, right? So showing signs of it trading above the 180 day EMA, I don't see that right now from this specific ticker. So because of that, right? It doesn't make sense on why this would be a good investment right now. So if our goal, if our sole purpose to, is to grow our account, why does it make sense to invest in something that's showing signs of the exact opposite? If you want your account to grow, then why are you investing in something that's selling off, right? Trying to buy the dip when there's no signs of a reversal just yet. You just saw that it got rejected by the SMA indicator, which has acted as a previous resistance before, and now it's coming back down to that $17 support. How does it make sense to want to invest in something. So yes, that good or potential good dip buy opportunity, but there's no indication of a reversal just yet. So I would really need to see this thing to start making higher highs. So I'm gonna set my alert here uh, for the break above when it breaks around above uh, the EMA line on the 180 day chart. And then we could follow up with it then. Yeah, cause there's no uptrend confirmation just yet. And that's very important for me. So if that's not important for you, uh, then just make sure that it meets your specific criteria. So uh, that was UWU, um, uh, WUBA. Okay, so we're seeing signs of a rejection as of right now. So we see an overall support right around $60, overall resistance right around $75. Overall, MACD looks pretty decent here. Um, I just don't like that it's been progressively making lower lows. So it's just not something that I personally find very attractive. Also, on Friday, I had a really green day. Based on previous patterns, it's been getting rejected by this EMA indicator. So just because it has one green day doesn't mean anything. What's one of the things that when it breaks above the EMA line that we like to wait out for? For all those that are part of Learn Plan Profit, you guys should know it, right? So I'm gonna wait and set my alert here as you guys comment on what is it that we like to wait for before entering a position as it breaks above the EMA line. Pullback confirmation, right? So it pushed up above the EMA line, right? This blue line right here. So it pushed up above it. Now it makes sense. Just like last time, it pushes up, pulls back, bounces on the EMA line, and then continues to uptrend. We need to wait for that confirmation. We need to get the confirmation that it's not gonna just push up and then sell right back down and continue to make lower lows, right? So we wanna get that confirmation. So that's why I set my alert here. And I'm also going to set my alert for the potential break of this thing making higher highs, as that might also be very attractive. So I really do appreciate the call out on WUBA, uh, but let's just simply follow up with it. So Josh Adams, CRMD, what's going on, man? So CRMD, thank you again for tuning in. So what's one of the reasons, based on my specific criteria, that I personally would not invest anything into CRMD? What's one of the reasons that I would not take a position on this? Just one, there's multiple reasons why. But there's one specific reason that really just it just doesn't mesh with my investing style just because it doesn't meet my criteria doesn't mean that you have to follow it but i think like everyone here can see if this thing is being promoted right on stock twits if this thing is if people are telling you to invest in crmd because it's like you know it's going to the moon regardless of what it is that should be a huge red flag on why this is one of the worst investments that you can make, right? So yes, some of you guys might get lucky and some of you guys might be able to lock in profits, but did you understand the growth? And that's what's important. Are you investing for today or investing for the future? And that's, I think, what people don't really ask themselves too often. They're just very like money hungry for that specific instant. So all I ask you to do is, you know, what's the risk when investing in a pump and dump? Well, you run the you know chance of being able to be caught at the very top and then if there's an aggressive sell-off then most people especially those that are just getting started get caught bag holding 
and then they get discouraged to ever invest in the stock market again. And that's why we always encourage our newer traders to start paper trading. So um, you can see right away on this, uh, what's it called, a 180 day, four hour chart that there's huge pushes of volume. Do you guys see that how the volume fluctuates, you know, drastically? That's huge signs to me that this is a potential pump and up. Also on Friday, at a 22% day, right? It had a nice little push up um, and it makes sense. You know, it definitely was trading between the middle and top view up. But look at all these people that probably bought here around 230 and then ended up cutting losses down here, right? Down 12% right away. One tenth of their account gone. And I can guarantee that so many people that when they started seeing this thing make lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, and then it just broke below the middle view up, so many people got pushed out, they cut, uh, cut losses, and then all of a sudden it starts to push up again. Again, if you don't understand the pattern, if you don't understand the growth, if you don't understand why it's moving, then simply don't trade it. That's one of the num best number one positions that you can take is never taking a position that you don't understand the risk of. I think we could all agree on that. So again, just because it doesn't meet my criteria doesn't mean that you have to follow it as well. It's just one that I see very overextended, very overbought, not a good deal, and it's being manipulated. There's no question about that. You could tell that by the volume. So I would simply, again, just like this one. Um, and again, I don't, like I have nothing against the people that are calling them out, but you know, T-R-L-Y, right? Uh, what is it? T-L-R-Y. Obvious signs of a pump and dump. No volume, all of a sudden it starts pushing up and then tries to continue to push up, right? And then you'll see these things uh, being promoted on stock tweets and stuff like that. What's another one that's like NLST, right? Same thing. T-O-P-S, H-M-N-Y, D-R-I-S, all of these, right? It makes sense on why these should be avoided. I think that's, that's something that we could all agree. So... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on DNR So what do you guys think about DNR? I actually um, if I'm not mistaken this one has pretty low volume No, uh, the volume has actually really picked up on this one Okay, so I, I haven't followed up with this one in quite a while But I think the last time that we were seeing this it was a little bit more on the overextended side. What is it? So what is it about DNR that for my specific criteria, for those that know how I trade, what is it that looks somewhat attractive about this? So, and then what is it that we would need? So DNR right now, right? So look at the MACD, it's showing signs of it being very oversold, showing signs of a potential reversal, right? The R size very oversold, so showing signs of a potential good deal. It's very close to this SMA line and due to its previous pattern, I think we could all agree that based on the past 180 days that DNR does a really good job trying to hold above this SMA line, the simple moving average. It's showing signs of how it could act as a strong support. Does it mean 100% that it has to bounce there? No. So just because it's oversold and it's a good deal does not mean that it's a good buy. Why? And some of you guys said it already. Why is DNR possibly not the best investment right now? Why? Exactly. I think Will, I need to give a shout out to my boy Will Smith uh, also. So, Will, you're 100% correct. DNR could be, um, or, or, you know, DNR is in that good deal range, but there is no confirmation yet. I think we could all agree on that. We've talked about the three stages of a reversal. Rejection, it's selling off. Consolidation, when it consolidates and kind of offers a horizontal pattern. And then confirmation. I have a whole video on YouTube about this. Feel free to search it up, right? Um, so I'm going to set my alert for the break above $6. This is out of all the stocks that we've broken down already. This is probably one of the ones that I'm probably most attracted to as of right now. So I appreciate this call out. All right, on to the next. Ignacio, my dude. Let's see. AVEO. Is this going to be a good one? Okay. AVEO, so showing signs of it being at the SMA support. So again, we don't know if it's going to bounce here. All we need and want to wait for is for an overall reversal. I like the RSI, I like the MACD, I like that it's at support, but what is it doing right now? It's making lower lows and it's getting rejected by this EMA line. There is no indication. So if your purpose and your sole like, you know, purpose to invest in the stock market is, is to grow your account, why invest in something that's showing signs of a downtrend pattern? There is no reason, right? So that's why we need to wait for a confirmation. So that's why I'm gonna set a series of alerts here. I actually kinda like this one. Um, it can be a good one, or it could be one that, you know, might need a lot more time to show signs of an overall reversal. And I'm gonna add that to my pending reversal watch list. So not my active watch list, but the pending reversal watch list. 
I'm a huge fan, Will Smith. Loved you from Fred. <laughs> Fresh Prince. What's up? What's up? Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. P. So B P T. Okay. This is also a perfect example, right? What about B P T is something that you know a reason why this might not be the best investment right now. So it's showing signs of an uptrend pattern. It's showing signs of it making higher highs, but like we could all agree, it's overextended, right? It's overbought, it's almost showing signs of a peak formation, and it's not a good deal. I don't know about you guys, right? So again, I've made, I've made this example, or I've done this example, and um, you know, I've said this example multiple times. You know, I have an iPhone X, right? So you guys know that you can most likely buy an iPhone X for about like what, $800 on the Apple store, right? So if I come up to you and I'm like, hey, I'll sell you this iPhone X, for $10,000, what would you guys say? Heck no, it's not a good deal. If I tell you that this house that I just bought is worth let's say a million, right? And I wanna sell it to you for two million, why wouldn't you not buy it? Because it's not a good deal, because you can do very quick due diligence and understand that that's not a good deal. But if I were to tell you, hey, I have this Ferrari 458, I wanna sell it to you for $10,000. You guys know that it's worth $100,000 plus and each one of you will find a way, will reach out to an investor, will find a way to gather those $10,000 because you know that that's the most amazing deal and that's how it should be every single time that you take a position. I don't know about you guys, but I work really hard for my money, right? Just like each and every single one of you. I don't wanna give it away. And yes, sometimes we make mistakes and we could learn from those mistakes, but it doesn't mean that we should forget about the sole idea that every single time that we invest in something, it should be for the sole purpose. My biggest thing on my YouTube channel, you guys know that I'm known for investing in the stock market, but it's not the only market that I invest in. What is the number one thing that I always talk about? Getting a good deal. That's all I want you guys to under like make sense of because if you know that you're getting a good deal, it means that you understand the investment that you're about to take. You've done your due diligence in understanding the market price, what it's worth, and what you could sell it for, right? With my cars, with my real estate, with the stocks. All very simple to understand. So you should upgrade your iPhone X to an iPhone XS. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll buy it for 100, I'll, I'll, I'll do an even exchange. I'll, I'll send you my iPhone X for your iPhone XS. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys that uh, example. So I hope, I hope that's something that you guys see a value. So again, I'm not trying to bash um, to uh, my boy that called out uh, BPT. I'm just making the sole example that, hey, you know, this is not a good deal right now. It's very overbought and it makes sense on why this thing can pull back. It normally bounces, right? I think we could all agree at this SMA line. So let's set an alert. Let's set an alert for when it becomes and gets closer to the SMA line because that would be worth you know, a potential that would be viewed as more of a deal. And that's what we are, deal hunters, right? I like that. All right, let's see. Ticker symbol spot. It's showing signs of a downtrend pattern. So I'm just gonna set my alert on these. So a lot of people are spending time sharing stocks and I get this, we're all getting started. I hope you guys know that. And that's why we have these, these Sunday stock talks. I wanna be you know as available and as accessible as possible. And this, it's just not showing signs of an uptrend. It's, yes, I agree, it's a little bit more on the oversold side. It's showing signs of a potential reversal, but I want a little bit more confirmation. So because of that, I just want to make sure that um, this is Spotify Technologies. Okay, that's pretty cool. So overall, SMA line has been acting as a resistance. Let's understand that. It has an up and coming earnings report, right? And then we set our alerts for the potential reversal to start seeing if it starts making higher highs. Let's simply wait out on that. So I <laughs> give some love to Ishmael. So low volume. You guys have like a little volume thing. Can't, can't you guys like just put your little toggle up or put on some headphones? I do apologize. I swear I thought the volume was good. Um, I have this like fancy blue microphone now. Guys, I'm like an official YouTuber. Uh, everyone was saying that like I had like the worst setup for the uh, for someone that had over 300,000 subscribers. So that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, do apologize if the quality is still not up to par. I still have to fix um, or get a better camera. So that's definitely something that I'll be working on. All right, let's focus now on this. Uh, ticker symbol S-M-A-R. 
All right, ticker symbol SMAR. You can see that it has pretty low volume. Mm, it actually showed a really nice pattern on Friday. Wow, in between the middle and top view up, I like that. Let's look at the five day, five minute chart, more relevant patterns. It looks like it was just Friday. It was just Friday that had a really nice push up every other day. It was getting rejected by this five day, five minute SMA indicator. That's very important to understand. Yep, you guys see this? It was just one day. One day is not overall confirmation. Why? Because we need to wait for that pullback confirmation and higher highs. So I'm gonna set my alert here for the potential pullback right around the EMA indicator and then set the alert for this thing to start making higher highs. So I really do appreciate the call out. Now we just need to follow up with it. So um, that's that's exactly what we'll do. So FTNT. So FTNT. Okay, I like this. I'm gonna wait for the break above. Again, why was this something that was... so? This is also another thing. So this is also another thing why or something, an indication that I think a best practice, I think I could call it, that I think can really give you a better understanding on when to like cut losses or to lock in profits. So what is one of the reasons that someone would invest in FTNT solely based on technicals? I'm a technical trader myself, right? So I based off, I trade based off analysis. So what is it? Of course, Adrian, um, what is it? on FTNT that would almost encourage me. So right now it's not showing signs of an uptrend, but for someone that would view this very closely and was willing to take the risk, what was or what would be a reason why I would be motivated to invest in this? So it's an overall ascending uptrend pattern and what indicator normally based on previous patterns, not right now, but normally around this general area, identified it as a potential good deal and support. What indicator? We could all say it, right? SMA indicator. The SMA indicator, the simple moving average, this green line that you see right here, it was where it normally would bounce at. It would normally hold above this SMA line. So if your sole purpose to invest in FTNT, let's say it was right around this area right here, right? As it really was riding, right? That SMA line, as we can see here. If that was your sole reason behind investing in FTNT, you guys have specific indicators that you guys follow very closely. We're all wired in different ways and we all use different indicators. There's an indicator that you sometimes follow very closely. And if that sole indicator is what encouraged you and motivated you to take that position, and then all of a sudden, bloop, it drops and breaks below that EMA indicator or SMA indicator, guess what? That's a break of pattern. You first saw value in something because it normally holds above that EMA, uh, SMA indicator. Now, it broke that. That pattern is no longer relevant. That indicator is broken. Yet, people continue to hold that position. So, if my sole reason to invest, right? In it, in it, I'm, I'm gonna make this analogy in the top of my head. If my sole reason was to invest in this property because every other property here, right, in, in my neighborhood was worth, let's say, $100,000. But then all of a sudden, these houses out right, like right before I'm about to buy it are now worth $50,000. I'm about to buy this one for $100,000. Does that make sense? No, because the support was broken. That value is no longer there. That really doesn't, that's not a good analogy. Wow. <laughs> I messed up on that one. Um, but you guys get the point. I'm trying to make it fun. I'm trying to make it so it sticks right to, to your guys' head. I want to make sure that we understand that if there's a reason behind you taking a position and it's based off, an, off of, of an indicator and it's broken, then and it, it makes sense on why then managing risk, cutting losses and due to the break of pattern would be a reason and encouragement to then cut losses. That, that's all I want to... Um, okay, some of you guys are saying that you guys like it, so... <laughs> You guys cracked me up. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and focus on the next one. So holy moly, I saw a ticker symbol shop. Let's go ahead and break that down. So based on my previous analysis, ticker symbol shop is about to go through an earnings. Based on previous pa uh, based on previous earnings, it usually barely hits its earnings. Um, but the most important part right now is that shop is very oversold. It was one of the top stocks that I talked about in the six stocks selling off right now. Um, and it hit lows of 130, right? And it's really starting to, what, what are the three stages that we talked about, right? Three stages of a reversal, rejection, consolidation, and then confirmation, right? So we can set our alert here because right now it's really building a resistance. And honestly, it's building a resistance right around 140. So I would set my alert for the break above 140 as when it breaks above 140, that would make sense on why that would be a good investment. As of right now, we don't know if it's gonna get rejected and continue to sell off. 
or we don't know if it's going to start making higher highs but all we do know is if we simply wait for a confirmation then that would be a smart you know investment decision i think that's something that we could all agree on right so i definitely do like the setup for shopify it's definitely in that oversold good deal range but it's not a good buy because it's still not making continuous higher highs i think we could all agree on that so yeah sbux what's going on derek all right here we go sbux so starbucks is making higher highs i like that the sma line is showing signs of a support um, and it continues to push up so last time it got rejected right around 58 to 59 dollars um, and the macd looks good the rsi looks yeah so 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 as long as it continues to make higher highs, I think that's what's important. I think that the, uh, this could potentially uh, make a good day trade um, if the, uh, what's it called? Margin of profit is there. This doesn't offer a huge margin of profit. Obviously, Starbucks being a multi-billion uh, dollar corporation, then, you know, uh, that kind of makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a resistance line right around here, right around $58. Um, and it's definitely showing signs of an uptrend pattern. Now we just want to follow up with it and see if it continues to do that or if it pulls back down to that SMA line. I'm also going to set my alert for that. So if I can get a really good deal, great. I might see value in swing trading. But if not, then maybe I can still day trade it and scalp it for one day, right? So I'm doing a school project on stocks. Um, what's your uh, advice? What was that? What's your advice? I have one month. So I would focus on practicing. I'd still not encourage you to trade. Um, my number one advice would be practice and implement everything that you learn, regardless if it's you think correct or not correct. That's why we encourage you to start paper trading and simulation trading. It's no monetary risk. And I, th I think it's one of the best ways on how to get started. So yeah, that would be my number one advice. I don't know about you guys, but that's kind of like how I work. Like I could read a book um, and if I don't like try to implement like what I'm reading about or take notes along the way, it just won't stick, you know, as well when it comes down to actually actively uh, trying to make sense of what's going on, the story behind it. Let's see, ticker symbol glue. All right, so glue is also showing signs of it being on the oversold side. Looks like it's building a resistance. I'm just going to set my alert here. I like the RSI. I like the MACD. I like the overall pattern. Uh, I don't like that it broke below the SMA line. It has done this before. So it's just something that we have to follow up with. So I'm going to add this one to my pending reversal watch list. Let me just make sure that it's not there. Here we go. Sweet. All right, let's do about five to seven more minutes of breakdowns and then we could go from there. So um, and I want you guys to know that if I don't break down your stock in this YouTube live stream, we have two things, right? We have a free group. It's called TechBud Solutions. I think it's the third link in the description. You guys don't have to join. It's just our free Facebook group. We have over 160,000 members. We're the largest private trading community uh, that's on Facebook. So if you guys haven't checked us out already, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, once you get accepted, we also offer a free group chat. It's 100% for free. All you do is click the top pin post here and that will bring you on over here. What you guys can do is all you guys have to do is tag me. Um, if you're part of Learn Plan Profit, all you guys have to do is go here to the group alert section and post your ticker in the ticker callout format. Don't write messages in here. Ticker callout format and just tag me, just like you see here, right? Tag me and then within 24 hours, I'll get back to you. Same thing when it comes down to TechBoot Solutions. That's what I'm gonna be doing all day tomorrow. All you have to do, and again, too many conversations are being hosted here. So anytime that there's a conversation, just remind the person to delete it. So all we should be seeing are ticker call out formats. That's all. So like we see Angel sharing, ticker call outs, and that's it. None of this stuff, again, if you're not posting this with any of the ticker call outs, then again, there's no point of doing that. So if I don't get to your call out by the end of this live stream, I'll get back to you. Again, if you're part of our free group or if you're part of Learn Plan Profit, just post it and I will get back to you. Um, and then I'll be making my video of the top stocks that I'm watching uh, for this week uh, tomorrow. So, C A L A. Okay. Uh, so this thing is showing signs of an overall reversal. It looks like it was previously making lower lows. Yeah. So I I just don't like that overall pattern. Uh, biosciences. Uh, I have 14 subs, $50. Why? You, I really do appreciate the donation, um, but I, 14 subs is more than some people, right? Um, if there's anything that I can do to better assist you, feel free to let me know. Um, but again, I, I'm, I do the Sunday stock talks for free for a reason, um, but I really do appreciate um, the donation. I'll, um, 
what's it called? I'll donate it on your behalf. So we'll make a $50 donation to, um, to a charity of your choice if you want to pick one. So let's see, let's see, C-A-L-A. -A. Um, it's making higher highs. We could definitely see that. I would really, I, I still find this to be a little bit riskier on my side. Um, and with that being said, uh, like as of right now, it's holding above this EMA line and it's viewed as somewhat of a good deal. But look at this MACD showing signs of a descending pattern. Uh, so I would like to focus more on this uh, to be more of a day trade. So I'd go on the one day, one minute chart. Friday would have not made sense. Um, it. So one thing that I've, I've talked about to the Learn Plan Profit Group is sometimes it's very difficult. I mean, we, I trade live with them every single morning, right? So they get to watch me trade live and usually it takes about one to two hours for a stock to identify which direction it's going to be trending for the day. So it's if, if it's going to be going up or down and it's very easy to utilize the VWAP indicators to know that. So, you know, if we would have at um, right as the market opens, when all we're given is, you know, the market, the open market price. It's very hard to identify if it's going to go down or up because usually the volatility is very high. Once everything starts to cool off and consolidate, we can identify more of its direction. And I think that if you're really struggling and you're taking more of your positions right as you're getting started, then maybe taking a step back and waiting one or two hours for the overall stock to identify more of its direction. So you could focus on whatever's maybe actively trending down or up for the day, right? I think that that's, that's something that maybe we can test and see if it works for you, right? That's why we're paper trading and simulation trading for those that are just getting started. I would encourage you to maybe give it a little bit more time to identify what the direction of that stock is for the day. I think that might be some good advice uh, for people that are just getting started. So that's something that I would do with that ticker that was just called out. All right, ticker symbol C-R-O-X. All right, I have to do these breakdowns quicker. I'm explaining and elaborating too much. All right, ticker symbol CROX. I like this potential bounce around the SMA line. I'm gonna set my alert for the potential and ongoing potential reversal. So I'm gonna add this one just here, yeah. Boom. Also gonna set my alert for potential pullback. Just as much as it could go up, it could go down. So uh, let's follow up with that. So how do you do ticker symbol? What? I didn't really understand that, man. I'm sorry. Okay, overall support here consolidating right around the SMA line. Let's set this alert here. Boom, boom. And just as much as it could go up, it could go down. That's ticker symbol CNAT, C-N-A-T. This is a pharmaceutical company. All right. All right, Michael, thank you again for tuning in. C-R-C. Okay, consolidating at this overall support around the SMA line, MACD is looking good, RSI is looking good. Now all we need to wait for is confirmation. So what does that mean that we, it requires? Patience, one of the like strongest qualities someone can have, but one of the most common strong, uh, one of these, what is it, most common qualities people lack, patience and discipline, right? Ooh, I like that. So Nate, donate um, is, Donate what to the Florida victims? Yeah, maybe we'll do something. Um, well, the fifty dollars, one hundred percent. I'll donate uh, the fifty dollars. So again, just know that your fifty dollars that you donated, um, we'll we'll do that. So we'll donate to the uh, Florida hurricane victims. Um, so we'll find a good charity. But maybe we could do something special as a group for them. Also, um, we we're actually speaking to someone that's part of our team that's unfortunately um, experiencing, you know. Uh, you know, not not the best experiences right now uh, for the, through that hurricane. So, um, yeah. B O O T. All right, B O O T showing signs of an uptrend pattern. I like that. Um, when it's showing signs of a potential reversal, I apologize. That was not an uptrend pattern. Poor choice of words. All right, so it's making lower lows right now and it tried to show a reversal before and then it got rejected. So that's why it's so important to wait for a pullback confirmation to see if we could start making higher highs. Um, so I really like the pattern on BOOT uh, and I'm gonna add this one to my pending reversal watch list. So I think it's very important. So I'm having patience waiting uh, for the likes to reach the number of viewers. Yeah, if only, right? If only our likes can even be half as much, 
that would be amazing. Half as much as the people that are watching live right now, I think that'd be sweet, but I don't think they, they care about me that much, so it's all good. If you're having a great day, that's what, if, if you're enjoying this live stream, that's what's important. So we'll set these alert here. Again, we're getting really close to this SMA line. It's showing signs of a potential reversal, but no confirmation just yet. So we'll set the alert there and then, yeah. I like the MACD, I like the RSI, I really like this pattern. How does this trade during? Okay, volume isn't that bad either. Five day, five minute chart, aggressive sell off, still showing signs of struggling reversal. So um, it might need some more time. This is Coca-Cola. Let's see, ticker symbol SFIX. Okay, that was a very common one that was requested last week due to the, the stock market crash, right? You guys see all those videos that everyone started to share? Uh, that was very funny, but yeah. Jumping on to that hype, I like it. Um, but okay, so as of right now, SFIX obviously on the very oversold side, showing signs of a potential reversal. Again, just because they had one green day does not mean that it's an overall confirmation. What's one of the things, right, that you can add to your criteria checklist, especially for a freaking swing trade, is that it starts making higher highs, that it has pullback confirmations, and that it's showing signs of an overall indication of a reversal, that you're not just so quick to jump the gun and to you know enter a very big position on something that's barely showing up any indication of a reversal. So yeah, as of right now, it's just consolidating and I would wait for an overall reversal, so. NBEV. All right, nope, uh, this is a pump and dump. I would stay away, VTVT. Nope, pump and dump, I'd stay away. Roku, okay, so I'm just gonna set my alert for the reversal. It looks like I already have my alert set up. There we go. Let's see. Okay, take your civil LLL. I feel like I'm going through these a little bit quicker just so I can go through more. Um, let's look at the five day, five minute chart. Overall downtrend pattern, 20 day, one hour aggressive sell-off, 180-day analysis. Yeah, definitely a selling off, showing no signs of a reversal just yet. So I'm just gonna set my alert, and this would be something to watch after. So we've already broken that one down. Uh, feel free to check out, I think it's called TradeView or something like that, um, to see if you could see natural gas. Why are so many, didn't, yeah, AMRN is a complete pump and dump. You can see with its overall volume, you can see that it's being manipulated. And as the volume starts to decrease, you'll see that it starts to consolidate and then it's gonna to start to sell off. I would personally completely stay away from these. Take your simple sale. Overall MACD reversal, RSI reversal. Okay. Let's see, it's not loading. All right, TZA. All right, TZA uh, showing signs of a potential reversal. It's very on the overbought side, very overextended, not so much of a good deal. It's more of an ascending uptrend pattern. If I were to even trade this, it would be solely more as a day trade. Uh, you know, as you know, on the one year chart, it was showing signs of an aggressive sell off. So it makes sense on why it most likely can and will get rejected. Uh, so if you see intraday opportunity, which means all within the day, then great day trade it, lock in profits and walk away, right? Especially when something is viewed as super overbought as it could aggressively pull back. So you look like you need a break. No, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. My neck hurts a little bit. I was watching TV. Like, I think I was like watching TV and I was answering um, messages uh, over Instagram. And I don't know what, like if it was my posture or something, but man, I messed up my neck. Um, let's see. All right. 
Okay, so there's a lot of people, again, so many people right now, and again, I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way, but there's so many people right now asking me, what indicators do I use, all this stuff. Again, that is exactly, because of that FAQ, exactly why I created this criteria checklist. It lists everything that is that I personally look for. It doesn't mean that you have to follow it, but if you are at all curious, about what I like to wait for before I enter a position. That's why I have this checklist. If you're part of Learn, Plan, Profit, I provided for you the link in the announcement section. And if you're part of TechBud Solutions, then all you have to do is simply watch this video, the stock market criteria checklist. I uploaded it yesterday. Check it out. It's the first link in the description. And then we send out the email once every night. So the people that signed up before 12, before midnight last night, you know, you guys all got uh, sent the checklist. If not, check your spam folder. We sent it all out. I think there's a little bit over, over a little bit over like a thousand or two thousand people. Not too sure. And then when it comes down to the uh, people that have signed up today, again, we're gonna send it out at around midnight tonight. So, please, please, please. I have over a thousand videos on YouTube. You don't even have to learn from my. You guys know that I'm very open about. You know, all, all we want to make sure that you do is that you take the proper steps in learning. How to invest in the stock market how to learn how to invest in general right so that's why we talk about simulation trading and paper trading to manage and to minimize overall monetary risk um, and we're the largest youtube channel for those who invest in the stock market you don't you know we have over a thousand videos on youtube not just about investing in the stock market but the different ventures and the different niches uh, that i invest in there's so many people that you guys can learn from on youtube just find whoever you find and their trading style or investing style effective, right? If it resonates well with you, I, I wish you the best, right? That That's all we want. Um, if you find my investing style effective, then guess what? I would love the uh, opportunity to be a part of your success. That's 100%, that's all we want, right? Um, and we've said that multiple times. I'm not here to say that I'm better than someone else. Um, it's whoever you work well with, right? We have an amazing community within TechBud Solutions. That's why we're the largest one out there, right? Um, it's free. If you're someone that, you know, um, just is really looking for a free outlet to surround yourself with like-minded individuals, check it out. Give yourself a week, a month, right? Just to surround yourself and completely obsess about a new market. So that's that third link in the description. Um, sweet. So John Nguyen, if I ever make money uh, trading, I owe you big uh, thanks again, Ricky. So John, I really do appreciate um, the kind words, but just like I've said multiple times, what is something that I say all the time? I have some, we, we reach over a million people with our videos every month, yet there's only a, a you know, the people within TechBot Solutions that I can keep track of that experience success. And what is it that those people are doing? They're disciplined, they provide structure, and they learn from their mistakes. We, we offer certain, like, you know, just steps so you manage your risk along the way and we hope that they could really guide you in the right direction my sole goal for each and every single one of you is regardless if you experience success in the stock market or not is for myself to have been that spark in entrepreneurship in investing and regardless if you invest in the stock market in the future or not but you're able to pivot to a new venture that's much greater that you can fully just flourish in that's what our goal is since the very beginning that's why I, it wasn't always just investing in the stock market, right? Like from the very beginning, I talked about my first video on YouTube was how I bought my first house at age 20. And then I talked about buying and reselling cars, investing in the car market and then stocks, right? People liked the way that I broke down stocks, didn't really like how much I or, or cared too much about uh, my real estate or my cars too much. So, you know, I, I'm just here to try to provide value and inspire people in, in the way that I think is best, right? And if you don't like my style, then guess what? You don't have to follow us, right? But I hope that you guys know that it's the entrepreneurship mindset. Just surround yourself with people that motivate you, that are like-minded and work nonstop every single day to always learn something new and to always improve yourself. I think that's what's important. So you need to make a video um, on your technicals of real estate. So it's all my real estate team. Just like I've told you guys multiple times, all my real estate videos are is just how amazing the people that I've worked with in the real estate market and how they've been able to been a, uh, be a part of my success. To be have been able to have you know invested and owned five properties by age 23, the only reason I was able to do that was because, again, I surrounded myself with people that were professionals in the real estate market. And it's a blessing, right? So it could either, networking can either be nothing at all or one of the most powerful 
resources out there. I think we could all agree on that because it could truly be nothing. People could view it as a waste of time, something that, you know, it is a waste of time if you don't take action. But that's so cool. Jared, super happy to hear that. That's what it's all about. So I, I actually just received a comment. I actually, I think, just responded to a comment maybe less than 30 minutes ago. And I know I'm going off on a tangent. I'm not going to be doing any more breakdowns on stocks. I just wanted to end it kind of like on a soft note. And again, for those that are part of Learn, Plan, Profit, um, you guys get to watch me trade live in the morning. Uh, but I, I do want to leave you guys uh, with one last message. There's someone that commented, I don't know, one of my videos is kind of like trending right now on YouTube again. Um, and it's like, it, it's the uh, like my day in life. And obviously, if they see someone that's young with a car, right, with an expensive car, so it showed my McLaren, um, people right away are gonna try to discourage you or to minimize or subjugate whatever it is that you are sharing to make themselves feel better. How many of you guys, and, and be honest with me, how many of you guys, when you first saw my videos, thought that I was BS, right? That regardless of maybe that, you know, my parents gave me money, right? Or that, um, I don't know, that I rent the cars, Right? That, the, that the houses are not mine. How many of you guys have ever thought that? I, I would, there's nothing wrong with being on the defense of someone. I think that's a, that's a good quality to have as long as you're open-minded. And this is something that I've talked about to a lot of the people that I've, I've worked with or I've become very like, not close to, but just aware of, right? There's a lot of entrepreneurs within our market. There's no question about that. But one of the biggest things that I've learned from a very early age is, to give someone the chance to prove themselves, right? If they can prove themselves, then great. That it's a potential, just again, another person that you can network with. And one of the things that someone said is like, okay, like you call yourself like a millionaire and stuff like that. And I get it, my videos, I wouldn't say they're clickbaity, right? I mean, I, I share exactly what it is usually uh, what the video shares uh, or, or the, what the video states, but um, I get it that it's in a very like attractive way that could, that could be, it's, it's to get someone to click and watch the video. You guys have to understand that that's the point of YouTube. But the whole premise of like, like that comment that was said today was that I probably pay about $2,000 a month to, you know, lease the car, right? Uh, that I don't own my houses or I don't know what it was. It was just, again, just trying to subjugate or minimize what it is that I do. I want to let you guys know that I showed you guys like the title of my, my cars, right? You guys have... For those that have watched me for a period of time, when it comes down to my real estate investing, you guys are well aware of what it is that I do. And the funny thing that I think that, you know, people do that are so like narrow minded is they try to justify why someone is in a position. Like if someone is better off than someone else, they will try to justify why they're there right? Or try to minimize their overall success. And I think that's one of the worst qualities someone can have. I'm not, I'm not saying that you should admire and acknowledge, right? And kiss anybody's butt that is doing better than you. That's not the point of that. The point is to not be so close-minded until you're given a reason to, right? Does that, does that make sense? Just like when it comes down to investing in the stock market, I encourage you to view other people that are in the stock market that are sharing videos and see what content works well with you. That that's all I that's all I want. If you guys see that, I have a very conservative style of trading. I have, I have a very conservative style of trading, and it's attractive to a lot of people and not very attractive to others. So as you're developing yourself as a trader, as an investor, as an entrepreneur, with whatever it is that you are trying to accomplish. I, I saw, you know who, uh, did you guys see Will Smith? So, oh, Will is still here. So Will Smith, um, you share, you know, screenshots on your Instagram about investing in the stock market and the progress that you've been able to make. But on top of that, you're also, you know, a student, if I'm not mistaken, and you're also talking about e-commerce and your online stores, right? And you're obsessing about other people that do well within that market. You're trying to learn from them. But what is it that you do? Every time that you learn something, you take notes and you implement it. One of the best, best practices and habits someone can have. But again, if you're so narrow-minded to try, to try to subjugate others on why maybe your dropshipping site was not successful so no one else can have a 10K day when it comes out to dropshipping, trust me, it is mind-boggling to me that some of the 16, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds even, that I've been able to meet within the past couple of months that have had, that have had an experience 
$10,000 days on their online stores. It is crazy to me because I didn't, I was not making that kind of money when it came down to when, when I was you know, 18 or 16. I can't even imagine. And so many people being so negative towards them. They're doing something that is so like innovative and, and so empowering. They're, they're inspiring so many other people, right? The same thing with people that do like Amazon FBA, right? Or have online stores or have successful businesses and ventures. And yet so many people spend so much time trying to discourage them, right? If the youth is our future, then why are we investing so much time and bringing them down? It just doesn't make sense to me, right? Invest your time and those who you see value in. That's all. Be, pish, be patient, be consistent, be disciplined, and be exactly what most people are. And that's just, yes, it's great to like have a passion for making money. And again, that's what sparked my interest. But I found out and I discovered right away that when I really started to do well was because I was following my passion. And I let my passion be what really drove my success. And that was exactly what that comment said. That that's one of the worst advice that I could give anybody because it's very misleading. I don't think so because I think as long as you're consistent and you understand that you have the general foundation to take advantage of opportunities that, you know, the, in the market that you're trying to pursue, then letting your passion be what drives your success. I, I think that's one of the most empowering, I think, words out there. At least that describes my success. And that is why I continue to share it in every video. So. Yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. This was a tangent I did not even think. How hilarious is it that every single Sunday stock talk, I go on huge tangents. I love these, right? Well, I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. Um, I really do appreciate everything it is that you guys do. Um, and just for the time that you guys have spent with me on this video. So it's been a little bit over an hour um, and I can't thank you guys enough. Hopefully I earned your guys' thumbs up. If you guys never want to watch any of my videos again, you guys could block me. I 100% understand. Um, but the last thing that I wanted to say is just, you know, let's kill it this week. Let's be extremely selective with what we choose to invest in. Let's say more no than we do yes. And Let's make sure that, again, we focus on that quality. If it's not showing signs of an uptrend, why are you going to invest your hard-earned money to invest in it and take action? It doesn't make sense, right? So, but yeah. So, I really do appreciate your guys' time. Um, let's see. How many likes are we at right now? I want to see if we should run a promotion or not. If we're close to about half the people that are tuning in live, we'll offer a discount. If not, it's totally okay. So we have about a little bit under 1,300 people tuning in. What's our likes at? I can't see our likes. 500, that's actually, actually I'm not gonna be, um, that's actually more likes than I thought. Um, I only thought we had like one or 200, um, which is still a lot, I hope you guys know that. So, um, okay, we, we're about 600, yeah. So what I wanted to offer is, how many of you guys are interested in the Learn, Plan, Profit course. Also, I hope you guys know that we're doing that 30 day money back guarantee on the Flipping Wheels course if you guys haven't checked that out. So that's when it comes down to investing uh, in cars. But okay, we have a good amount of people that are interested. Um, let's see, let's do a discount. Okay, let me check this real quick. Give me, give me like one minute. If you guys can give me one minute, I'll give you guys a solid discount. see all right let's do a solid one let's do forty dollars off I was gonna do 20 let's do forty dollars off perfect let's do this I don't know if you guys will be able to see it um, but the promo code is going to be uh, due to our Sunday stock talk. So it's going to be $40 off for those that are interested. If you're not interested, 100%, I appreciate your guys' time. You guys don't have to, right? We have um, the free videos on YouTube. Uh, but for those that would like to work with me on a closer basis, right? You get to watch me trade live every single morning. It's a one-time fee. You have a lifetime access to the course and everything that's included with the private group chat. Um, and again, it's every single morning at Market Open. We go live, we trade for about an hour, and I answer any questions in real time. You get to see me enter positions, exit positions, explain my thought process. And if you've been really struggling for someone to hold you accountable, just because that might not be your strongest quality, then trust me, you could ask anyone within Learn, Find, Profit. I will hold you accountable for every action that you take. And 
I think that's what's very important, right? We're not here just to fluff it up that, oh, you're doing good, right? We'll, we'll point out what you're doing well, but I'll also point out areas of improvement, right? So the promo code is gonna be uh, promo Sunday 40. So S-U-N-D-A-Y 40. That will give you $40 off the Learn Plan Profit Lesson Library. And I don't know if the link is going to work, um, but what I'll do is, yeah, it won't let me post it. Ah, I think I need to make it a smaller link. I really do apologize for the inconvenience. This was not planned. So here. I hope this link works. This should take you directly. You guys could click the first link in my bio, the first link in my bio, and then you know see everything that's included in the course, see if you think that it's the best fit for you. And then whenever you guys are ready, I just posted the link, right? Um, as you guys can see here. So it's Sunday 40, S-U-N-D-A-Y, four zero. That will give you $40 off the Learn, Plan, Profit, Lesson Library. It's gonna make it a total of 259 for those that are within the United States. Um, and that's, that's really just it. For those that are not interested, 100% I understand. I really hope that you guys can continue to enjoy the free content that I share on YouTube. Uh, this is solely just for people that are looking to you know work with me on a closer basis as I work with this group every single day, right? Um, so it's not just a course, right? We work with you guys every single day. Uh, we answer questions and you have the ability to direct message me uh, 24 seven, right? So it's a lifetime access app for life. So Greg, I really do appreciate um, the uh, the, the positive feedback. So I do want to answer this. So um, one thing that uh, I did see that people were saying were, uh, let's see, um, we're asking like, is there a refund? I want to let you guys know that if you're already like asking if there's a refund, you're already like questioning if this is the right course for you. So I would rather have you guys not enroll, right? Th that makes sense, right? So if you're already questioning if this is like the right course for you, then you might want to give it a little bit more time, right? Do your own due diligence. Uh, there's no no reason to jump right into it watch a couple of my videos Like look at the welcome page. I explain exactly what's included in the course um, And what you get to experience and if you think it's the right fit for you great If you see that it's not there's no reason to buy it, right? If, if you don't see value in it, never invest in what you don't see value in um, You know, I, I feel like with what it is that we provide that's great. And if it's not for you then um, I really hope that you could find something that that will be of value for for you know uh, your, your money so yeah, that's that's really just it. So guys, I'm so pumped for this week. I'm so pumped. Isn't that so cool that every single week, Monday through Friday, we're given the blessing to make money by investing money. Isn't that so cool, right? So we have like multiple different sources of income, but my team knows that one of my most like exciting days is when I break and when I exceed my goal of, you know, the 500 to $750 profit, and I can clear $1,000, right? Profit a day. And the reason that that's so just exciting and rewarding to me is because the amount of time and effort that I dedicated to get to the point where I could experience those days, right? And it's only the beginning because we know that with the skill set that you can learn to do this, your account shouldn't only continue to grow, right? So 5, 10, 15, 30 years down the road, being able to trade with more money, it's just amazing to know that with the proper skill set, what you can do and how powerful you could be. So, um, and then the last thing, that I really um, wanted to talk about. And I'm not gonna talk about it too much, so I don't wanna take too much of your guys' time. Uh, but because of all the comments that we had in the $50 donation, I did see another donation that was like $2 or something like that. Um, yeah, so, um, we had a lot of people talking about the hurricane that happened and hit Florida, right? I'm gonna look a little bit more into it, uh, but I would really like to at least personally do something uh, to help those, especially our members. So like last time, um, when there was a hurricane in Texas, uh, we donated a certain dollar value uh, to um, a member within TechBud Solutions that was unfortunately devastated. Please do not direct message me. Um, I mean, if, if you're like in the hurricane or anything like that, um, I just don't want to get a flood of people. Like I will have no way to like verify. I hope you guys know that, like to verify if you are there or not. Um, I want to dedicate a little bit of my time and my team's time uh, to do a little bit more due diligence and see what we would like to do uh, in effort to give back, right, to our community that might not be in the most like encouraging point, right? It's, it's. I think that's one of the beautiful, most beautiful things about our community is that we're really here to, you know, motivate and 
excite one another and uplift one another. And I think that's what makes us so great and so unique. So I really do appreciate your guys' time. Please remind me, especially for those that are part of Learn, Plan, Profit, every single time that I'm about to tune out, be like, Ricky, what are we doing for those, for, for our teammates um, in Florida? I think that's something that we should say every single time that um, you know, we finish our lives. And we need to do something by this weekend. Um, so I'm pumped. Um, guys, thank you guys again for your time. Continue working hard. Continue following your dreams. Let your passion be what drives your success. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy.